Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, honored guests, my fellow Americans. Tonight I have the honor of reporting to you on the State of the Union. Let me begin by saluting the new Speaker of the House and thanking him, especially tonight, for extending an invitation to two guests sitting in the gallery with Mrs. Hastert. Lynn Gibson and Wenling Chestnut are the widows of the two brave Capitol Hill police officers who gave their lives to defend Freedom's House. Mr. Speaker, at your swearing in, you ask us all to work together in a spirit of civility and bipartisanship. Mr. Speaker, let's do exactly that. Tonight, I stand before you to report that America has created the longest peacetime economic expansion in our history. With nearly 18 million new jobs, wages rising at more than twice the rate of inflation, the highest home ownership in history, the smallest welfare rolls in 30 years, and the lowest peacetime unemployment since 1957. For the first time in three decades, the budget is balanced. From a deficit of $290 billion in 1992, we had a surplus of $70 billion last year, and now we are on course for budget surpluses for the next 25 years. Thanks to the pioneering leadership of all of you, we have the lowest violent crime rate in a quarter century and the cleanest environment in a quarter century. America is a strong force for peace from Northern Ireland to Bosnia to the Middle East. Thanks to the leadership of Vice President Gore, we have a government for the information age. Once again, a government that is a progressive instrument of the common good rooted in our oldest values of opportunity, responsibility, and community, devoted to fiscal responsibility, determined to give our two people the tools they need to make the most of their own lives in the 21st century. A 21st century government for 21st century America. My fellow Americans, I stand before you tonight to report that the state of our union is strong. America is working again. The promise of our future is limitless. But we cannot realize that promise if we allow the hum of our prosperity to lull us into complacency. How we fare as a nation far into the 21st century depends upon what we do as a nation today. So with our budget surplus growing, our economy expanding, our confidence rising, now is the moment for this generation to meet our historic responsibility to the 21st century.